I did a video earlier this week talking about the whole big swollen Tony Khan controversy, if you will, and talking about how it's not necessarily racism per se. It is a problem of presentation and equality of opportunity when it comes to black wrestlers with AEW. And you should check out that video. I will link it in the description box below. But the presentation problem is not solely and exclusively an issue for the black wrestlers within AEW's umbrella. Let's be clear. That is a problem and a significant problem. And I've talked about that. Just sometimes you look at the product in general. And sometimes it's hard to decipher you know, what's intentional, what's not, because a lot of the presentation is just so bad. It really is. What do I mean? Let's take a look at this week's Dynamite. For example, again, you're opening up with your AEW World Championship. But not the champion in a match, just that. Your champion in a world championship match defending said world championship. If you used to bitch about CM Punk not main eventing WWE pay-per-views on his whatever 434 day title reign, then you should be raging about this now. Conveniently, a lot of you won't because it's <laughs> AEW. Fucking hypocrites. Be consistent. You cannot consistently... I get why you're doing it, especially with the lead-in from Big Bang Theory, New Network, TBS. I understand why you're doing it, but you're falling too much in love with this habit of trying to front-load your shit, and it destroys the flow of the rest of the show, and I certainly think it did here. And what happens is you start programming the audience to say the most important thing on the show is going to happen first, why would I need to watch the rest of it? Why would I need to watch the rest of this two hours? And who could blame them? Am I wrong? When you're putting your world champion in your curtain jerker spot and you're putting mid-card stuff in the main event, something is fundamentally wrong with your structure, your flow, and your presentation. And then even this match here. The first time around, Paige and Danielson went 60-minute Broadway. But you can have your own opinions about whatever. But this time, you go half as long. You have them juicing damn near from the beginning. Just ultimately have Hangman Paige pin Brian Danielson. The hell happened, Brian Danielson? Where the hell was your political will and skill here? I would have expected a, that doesn't work for me, brother. You know better, ugh. But now you're at this point, okay, they win 60 minutes, now the baby face has won clean and retain, why do you need to have another match? I know what some of you are going to say, oh, because it's so great and so awesome, now you have an excuse to have a third one, let him tear down the house. No, fucking, what's the point? And Brian Danielson is not just some ham and egger that you brought in. He was one of the bigger names, one of the bigger deals you brought in. And to validate that, you do not have him put over a hangman page, who frankly is a much better chaser than he is a champion. Look at his title reign. He's being presented. Again, the presentation is a problem. He's being presented as a second or third rate act. He is. And if you can't accept that, then what the hell show have you been watching? But you're going to sit there and have him beat Danielson here? Not that. Much more compelling story with Danielson as the champion and Paige chasing him. Just fundamentally is. So now, what, you do another match between these two for the hell all of it? So that way the match and move Meltzer marks can beat off to it? Not this shit. And honestly, that was the best part of the show and it was all downhill from here. MJF versus Sean Dean. Out comes CM Punk before the match even gets going, so that way he takes out Sean Dean. So that's right, Sean Dean starts off the year 1-0 and hands MJF a loss due to disqualification. I guess that's Sean Dean's reward for standing up for Tony Khan, huh? Yeah, that's what you get. It's almost felt like this was personal. There's so many other wrestlers you could have put in this spot, but after the week that Tony Khan had had and the uproar that was on social media and the internet, this was the choice that he made? Interesting to say the least. But the whole stuff with MJF and CM Punk, like we know eventually it's probably leading to a pay-per-view match. Cool. 
at some point in time, the shoot promo stuff, like even that can run its course a little bit. Um, just saying. I'm going to get really loud. I'm going to get really angry. Some good barbs thrown back and forth, but yeah. Right after the world championship match, it was hard to get really get into this and really get focused on this. And the only other thing that really happened in the first hour of the show was Chris Jericho coming out for a segment looking like he had way too much just for men in his damn head. I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, and calling out 2.0. And yeah, he, even you had a lot of the Jericho-holics and the hardcore Y2J fans were shitting on this segment online, which is rare when you talk about the AEW stands. Like, they would usually not crap on something like this, but this was not good. Stop trying to make us care about 2.0. They are scrubs. Is this seriously the best thing you could think of to do with freaking Chris Jericho? Seriously. Or Eddie Kingston? Seriously. Unbelievable. And that was basically your first damn hour plus of the show. Wardlow versus Antonio Sombrano, so that way he could just sit there and power brown Sombrano to kingdom fucking come. Like you're continuing to fester and build the inevitable face turn for Wardlow, which is cool, I guess. Um... Making him look strong as he gets ready to face off CM Punk coming up. But, you know, it's all good. Like this, I will at least say from a presentation standpoint, is presentation done well in my opinion. Just saying. Then you get to the TBS Championship Tournament Final. Now, help me understand this. After a month plus long tournament... So you actually have purpose and reason and meaning for this. This wasn't random. For a title, a belt, that is named after your new cable network home for dynamite, mind you. You have this match between one of your bigger signings of the year in Ruby Soho and somebody that you have been putting the rocket ship behind since she debuted in Jade Cargill. And with all of those factors... And especially with what had happened on social media, you didn't even fucking main event this match? Now some of you are going to point to and say, well, did you watch the match and how cringe it was? Oh, it certainly was not good. But it's not, frankly, like the main event was a whole lot better because that was cringing crap for different reasons. This is just really bad. I give you that. But you've been pushing Jade for a year. You've been building to this moment. Anybody that thinks that Jade wasn't originally slated to win this is stupid. Oh, they just changed their decision. Like, if you can't see this, I mean, come the fuck on. This tournament was built for her to win, in part, so that way they could give her a second-tier title, so that way they could keep her away from the AEW Women's Championship, so they keep her away from Britt Baker and let others go after Britt. This has been in the works for months. Can't help if you're a moron and can't see that. But you had a tournament. The belt is named after the network that the show is airing. It's got your women who barely get any play on the show talking about the women's division as a whole. You've got two women that you've invested some in for different varying re levels. And you can't even main event this fucking match? Unbelievable. Brandon Phillips sighting FTW. Jade with her daughter. It was a nice moment and everything. And that was cool. But again, the presentation. This should have been the main event. Malachi Black versus Brian Pillman Jr. Now, who gives a fuck about the match? You had the one botch. I'm assuming it was a botch. Who even knows anymore with Pillman Jr.? And then Malachi Black hits him with the kick. I, I, the only thing that I really cared about, because I didn't give a shit about this, because why would anybody? Did the Lucha Brothers come in to make the save? Just to then ultimately teleport to the fucking back? So that way they can make their entrances for the main event? What? What in the hell is going on here? It was horrible. And speaking of that tag team championship match. The Lucha Brothers were shitty tag champions due to shitty presentation. It was a stupid ass decision to put the belts on them. You undercut another team who was, moreover, who was a more primary focus at the time that also made much more logical storyline sense than the Jurassic Express to take the belts off of the bucks of suck, but some 
fucking idiot decided that the Lucha Bros needed to be the tag champs instead. Because you gotta please Dave, right? Fucking idiots. Wasted their fucking time instead of putting a belt where the hell they should have been on Jurassic Express all along. So that way you put them in this spot here. And I'm going to say this. Number one. If you can't do your shit fluidly, don't do it. Several stupid ass looking spots in this match where you had to set it up because Penta and Phoenix are sitting there and trying to get it. If you can't do it crisply and fluidly and make it not look like stage fake choreographed bullshit, then you shouldn't do that state fake stage choreographed bullshit. And if it bothers you that I call it that, then maybe they should be better at their goddamn jobs and executing their damn moves. And you wouldn't have to worry about that, would you? Looked horrible. That's the horse shit my boomer ass is talking about. Can't believe people stand that. Unbelievable. So whoopee. Jurassic Express wins. And of course, it's got to be about goddamn Jungle Boy. So it was damn special about Jungle Boy. Luchasaurus and his people have been fighting for justice for 65 million years. But we want to put all the effort and energy behind Jungle Boy. So I'm only mildly, tepidly happy that Jurassic Express won the belt. Because the timing was off. Because some dumb dick in the organization, Tony Khan or whoever, made the decision not to put the belt on him a couple of months ago. When the fuck they should have. Put him into this spot where you had already undercut this moment happening because you put the world championship match first. Like, fuck this shit. The only, the only thing is... Phoenix. Gah! Somebody's going to get really, really hurt really badly. Like, if you can't do this shit right, again, don't fucking do it. And to those of you that are saying, oh, how dare you laugh about this. I'm the same guy that laughs about fucking Psycho Sid sacrificing his leg for WCW at Sin 2001. Get over yourself. <laughs> Phoenix. I, I laugh because it's, it's, it sucks because he had to sit there, ah, my arm, my arm, in order to get somebody to pay attention to it. Thankfully, apparently, it was dislocated, not broken, so he won't be out of action for too long. So, very thankful for that. Good for him. But it was really funny. The one thing that was actually funny about that, in all seriousness, is that AEW thought it was such a good idea to tweet out the video of this spot. They were basically proudly demonstrating, oh my god, look at this spot, as a guy sits there with a fucking dislocated arm. Presentation all fucked up, and then even the ending. You couldn't even just let Jungle Boy and Luchasaurus, the Jurassic Express, have their moment in the sun. Let them have their shine with Christian. You sat there and have all these tag teams appear on the frickin' ramp, and you're showing Jericho and all these other people. And it was just all types of fucking awkward. We're planting the seed that you can have all these teams challenge them. You're planting the seed of you're being fucking schizophrenic, and you can't focus on the moment that just happened. God, the presentation of this week's Dynamite was so fucking bad. Bad, 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 bad. Matches all out of sequence. The shit they did within them was just cringe. Now, granted, on TBS, I'll give them credit. They did a decent number. And remember now, because it was a good number in terms of total number of viewers, total number of viewers matters for AEW all of a sudden, magically. Feature that. But they did over a million viewers and a decent demo rating. Doesn't knock your socks off and it didn't suck and shouldn't cause panic. So that's positive. That's a good thing. Because you had the uncertainty of what was going to happen with that first episode on TBS with the stronger lead-in from the Big Bang Theory. Uh, we saw it. The results for week one were good for them. But in its own bubble, this show was a presentation nightmare. 